Hello, Tendies, Friendies. Welcome back to Tendies Club. Missed you over the weekend. Got a great show for you. Cassava Sciences issued its PR for tomorrow morning. So remember, tomorrow morning, 845, 845 morning Tendies. We'll do the noon Tendies Club as well. But uh, tomorrow, Cassava Sciences, an oddly timed press conference. Remember this? Uh, was scheduled for last week. They put it off. It was, there was never, Kasava never even announced they were doing it. And then later announced they're going to do that conference a week late, the only company. So very oddly timed. So I am cautiously expecting a PR of some news beforehand. We'll see. It's before the market opens. So we'll see. But uh, tune in tomorrow, 845. We'll cover that. Uh, so they put out the, 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 the tune in details for that. Meantime, how many times have we seen that before good news, like before we got cleared by the FDA, the citizen's petition, uh, there, how many uh, slamming articles and all those things came out trying to get people to sell uh, because, so that I guess they could cover before the good news? Well, today, a no name, I don't know if I call it a no name, but a not very heralded investment bank uh, initiated coverage on cassava. Uh, with a sell, said Semifalam's not going to be commercialized. $8 price target. I guess that's the cash on hand or something like that. Uh, but we'll take a look at that. And we'll take a look at the fella that gave it that $8 price target. We'll see, is that firm conflicted? And uh, what is the record of that analyst? What's the record of that analyst? I'll give you a hint. It's awful, atrocious, one of the worst you'll ever see. And we'll even take a look and one of his picks and what kind of companies he does back. And then we will take a look at Compass Pathways, my pick in the psychedelic space. Very interesting stuff, fascinating stuff. We'll take a look at that. Uh, we That one, we, we last, not this past weekend, but two weekends ago, we sent that to small cap subscribers. It was up last week like 7%. It's up like another 5% today or something like that. Uh, the... Price targets on it, the average price targets like a quintuple from here. So very interesting stuff. We'll take a look at that. Uh, not an investment advisor, not investment advice, not a tax advisor, not tax advice, Tendies Club. I've got some research around here. Uh, the people that are, apparently the people that are not subscribing to the newsletter are dying alone. And that's really, a, that's really sad to see because it's a free newsletter. And the research goes on to say that if you do join the free newsletter, that you'll die surrounded by your friends and family at a time and place of your choosing at after a long and successful life. So that's a really good, so for a, for a free newsletter, that's not too bad. So I would go ahead and sign up for that free newsletter now. Guys, please join that free newsletter. I'm going to, I sent out over the weekend, uh, a week late, this last report as a special gift. I gave another bonus before, uh, the week before. Join the free newsletter as we start doing, as I, I guess I get the show going. I had a good weekend of getting stuff done. Also found the next stock. So please join the small caps newsletter as well. So I, I still haven't got the set together, but I did, I did find the next stock and do a lot of good research. I got a lot of good work done. So I keep telling you I've got stuff to do before I really get going with the show. Good weekend. This could be the week I finish all my stuff up. We'll see. Anyway, uh, uh, so please join the free newsletter. As we get that going, I'll be sending you, a send, I'm going to send a daily email with the show. Here's what we're going to talk about. Here's the links and all that stuff. And then I'll also send you a bonus offers and free gifts and stuff like that. I'll make it worth your while. So sign up for that free newsletter right now and you will die uh, surrounded by all your loved ones at a time and place of your choosing after a long and fruitful life. Excellent. So let's get going. Let's do it. All right, so here's the details. So they, they, they issue the PR. They're the You know how long-suffering uh, cassava, uh, us cassava shareholders have been. So the, on the discords, it's like, are we going to get news tomorrow? I personally feel that there's no I, – I just feel it's so odd for them to do the, the, the conference a week late and not have news. And to do it at 9 a.m., you know they like their pre-market uh, uh, 8Ks their, and their press releases. So we'll see. We're due for – we're due for biomarkers. We're due for ad hoc data on the open label. We're due for enrollment updates on cognition maintenance and the phase threes. We're due for a bunch. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Uh, and then, oh, so here's Univest. So Univest Securities starts Cassava Sciences at a sell. At a sell with $8 price target, says phase three trials are unlikely to lead to commercialization, expects further stock dilution. I don't know if there was more to his note than that. 
uh, James Jang, uh, James Jang is the person's name. We'll take a look at that. Take a look at him in a moment. Uh, but that was all I could find as far as the note. So it looks to me like he's just saying the drug is worthless and they trade for cash. Okay. So by the way, I wanted to show uh, cassava's up. Cassava started down on the FUD, but it's up nicely. And then Compass is up 7.47%. So got behind it in the 12s. For the for the subscribers so join up and so now it's in the 14th but the the average price targets in the 60s and the high price targets are are like double that and if you look at the end markets there's a lot of parallels with cassava but anyway we'll get to that when we get to that all right so uh eight dollar percent that's what this guy says so that's james jang well here's james jang guys do you remember i got these tattoos because I was the number one ranked stock analyst in the world by tipranks.com. How does James Jang do on tipranks.com? Ranked number 7,738 out of 7,931. That's abysmal. That's abysmal. Uh, or you could also look at it as 15,982 out of 16,281. Absolutely atrocious. 31% success rate and an average return after the biggest bull market in history for the last 12 years. His average return, minus 10%. So basically the worst stock analyst in the world <laughs> doesn't like us. That's fine with me. And someone pointed out he can't hold a job either. So we got a year and seven months and then we got a year and one month and oh, well, here we go. Four years and seven months, various companies, whoops, couldn't even hold a job for one year there. And now he's at Univest. And here is happiness. When he got the, I, the, this is the first one I saw happiness. So Univest, it happens to be an, a New York based, everyone here has an Eastern name, New York based uh, Eastern investment company. So when, you, when I saw the name happiness biotech, that screams like a Chinese company. If you see like the Happiness Sunshine Rainbow Corporation, it's probably like a dolphin killing company in China or something like that. They name up. They they they. If you're if you want to defraud somebody, you name it like you know happiness, like happiness. So, not saying it's a fraud. I don't know, but that was my impression. So I looked into it. So here it's called Happiness Biotech. That was eight months ago. It's called Happiness Biotech. Now it's called Happiness Development Group because it lost about 80% of its value in about eight months since he uh, has called it a buy. It is a Chinese base. It was a biotech. Now it's classified as a packaged foods company, but they just, uh, it, they just rebranded themselves again as electric vehicles and also just got into cannabis. What a fraud, fly-by-night, uh, fake company this seems to be to me. That is the kind of company that James Jang gets behind at Univest. Happiness Biotech, now called Happiness uh, Development Group, <laughs> which went from packaged foods to biotech to uh, electric vehicles to pot <laughs> or something, uh, losing 80% since James Jang got behind it. So there you go, James Jang. Uh, so happiness development. So there's them getting into pot. Here's happiness getting into uh, there's electric vehicles down here somewhere. International expansion. That's great. Uh, Shanghai Automobile, Automobile Trading Group. Some electric vehicle dealie. So they're great job there. Happiness. And then also conflicted. So Eric, Edric, Edric Gu, Gu, Edric Gu, uh, look at him on his, uh, on his Instagram three years ago. These guys IPO'd Immune Bio, Cassava Sciences competitor Immune Bio. So they IPO'd him as, a, as an investment bank. So a little bit of a conflict of interest, perhaps. And there's their IPO. And then Saba's max pain is either 36 or 35. I'll tell you tomorrow which of these sites is correct, which one is, can't tell which one is updating better. I, uh, it must be this new one someone gave me because 
that other one, but I didn't feel like it was updating correctly last couple of weeks. So Cassava's uh, Max Payne looks like it's at $35. We'll see though. Tomorrow is going to be, should be a fateful day. Wednesday, I believe we get Federal Reserve chatter of some kind. I got to see what kind we got. But uh, there could be a choppy week in the market as well. And then we have Tendies Friendies Compass Pathways. This is sign up for the small caps newsletter. Over the weekend, I found if you liked Wayside Technology Group, I just found another company that's sort of like Wayside Technology Group. It has a dynamic like Wayside, which I really like. So I'm very excited about this next one. I'm going to, this weekend, I'll send out the report on the next small cap. If you liked Wayside, it's going to be like that one. I'll give a week for the subscribers and then I'll tell everybody about it. Here was uh, the last two weekends ago, I, I wrote about Compass, gave subscribers a week. It's up like what, 14%? And now uh, let's look into it. So let's, let's, let's see what all the hubbub is about. So join the small caps newsletter right now. Uh, fascinating new dynamic in mental health. So Compass Pathways, it's CMPS going after very large and long suffering markets in depression and anxiety disorders. So Compass does psilocybin. It's also investigating other psychedelics that uh, work on the 5H2A. We'll see, we'll see the receptor. 5H2, I can't remember which, which one it is. 5H2A receptor uh, and the serotonin receptor, serotonin type of receptor, a type of serotonin receptor. And the research into psilocybin is very interesting. It's interesting in psychedelics in general, and psilocybin seems to be the best. So anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So here's the research. Four reasons we, we love Compass. But I, the one thing I want to say there is I said, de, when I wrote this, I said depression, anxiety disorders, and addiction. They are, the, this company is, uh, their lead program is, is in treatment-resistant depression. Its second program in phase two is in PTSD, so anxiety disorders. And then addiction is in there because there is a great deal of therapeutic evidence, of data, of evidence for therapeutic use in addiction. They are not currently addressing that, but uh, psilocybin it does have a lot of data for it. Another, another, uh, so psilocybin is, is, uh, is going directly after addiction right now. That one could be on there, but that's not as large as depression and anxiety disorders. Anyway, four reasons we love Compass. So mental health markets are as big as markets come. So this is the first comparison with cassava. So according to Lancet, mental illness is one of the largest costs in the world, uh, costing the global economy $1 trillion. So that's mental illness. And then if you include the poor health and productivity costs, it was $2.5 trillion in 2010, going to $6 trillion in 2030. So mental illness, we all know there's a mental illness epidemic. What the heck do we do about it? These exciting therapies are something. These problems, uh, not only are these problems enormous and enormously costly, but there have been very little traction made with the new therapies. So they're huge markets. This is all, so here again, like Alzheimer's disease couldn't be larger. And then there's not been new therapies or good therapies really at all for a long time. SSRIs are still a first line therapy that leave many wanting and were first brought into market in the 1980s. So you have the, just about the biggest markets in the world with drugs that, have, that, that, that people couldn't be in more dire need. And it's been four decades since they had anything. And then psychedelics are having a renaissance. Did you know that in 2019, the FDA approved esketamine, which is a chemical mirror of ketamine. Ketamine is a psychedelic. Uh, ketamine for treatment resistant depression and major depression with suicidal thoughts. So they're not really using this as a therapy to generally help you with your issues. More like when someone is in uh, su in crisis with suicidal ideation, you give them this psychedelic and it changes their mindset, perhaps amongst other things, gives them the glimpse of not being depressed is what I've heard it described as. And uh, and that, that can be a rescue agent and that's what it's being used for. It's approved as of 2019 with its psychedelic properties being primary to its reported mechanism of action in depression. So psychedelics are being used, they're approved and being used now by doctors in this country. And this, so Harvard, Johns Hopkins, Mount Sinai, NYU, Stanford, Yale, even the very once conservative, to say the least, University of Alabama at Birmingham. I used to live in Baltimore, and at the time, my next door neighbor was a very fascinating guy named Andrew. He was working on uh, the psilocybin trials at Johns Hopkins when they very, very, very first began investigating this. 
It's very interesting stuff. It's now come full circle. We'll see actually some results of those trials. But uh, the, the, the idea is the stigma is gone. So the stigma around psychedelics has plainly eroded and the evidence of their therapeutic value is mounting. Okay, so we have giant markets, number one, really couldn't be bigger and they need therapies, haven't been good development in a long time. Two, psychedelics are having a renaissance. Three, of the psychedelics, psilocybin looks like the best one. At least nine U.S. cities, as well as the state of Oregon, have legalized or decriminalized psilocybin mushrooms. Psilocybin has some of the most exciting therapeutic data and perhaps the best safety, tolerability, efficacy profile of all psychedelics, psychedelics studied for therapeutic use. And then here is, I don't know if you can see that, but this is, this, the exciting thing about this is this is after one administration. People take their SSRIs every day and they have, they come with a, a black box suicide warning for one thing, which this drug may also, <laughs> but uh, this, that's a drug you take every single day and it has sexual side effects and other side effects as well. This is one administration and we'll see, the, the, we'll see how it works. It seems to be very interesting. So this is at Johns Hopkins. At Johns Hopkins couldn't be a better medical institution. 17 participants at week one and 17 at week four had a clinically significant response to the intervention. That's 71%, 71%. So 70, 17%, 17 participants, which is 71%, and seven, at, week, at week one and at week four, so that's 71%. It's so like 17 out of what, 21 or 22, I don't know. Had Four had a uh, clinically significant response to the intervention, a 50% reduction in this depression score, grid hands, and 14 participants at, uh, at week one and 13 participants at week four were in remission. So if you see here at week one, the baseline, a high score meaning depression, and that score gets more than cut in half uh, at week one and at uh, week four still. So a month later after one session, and so they have one of these therapeutic sessions and then it's not a trick. Whereas ketamine might give you, might just put you in an altered state and that's helpful for just, just to get you out of a bad state. Perhaps it's more therapeutic than that, but this is more therapeutic when it works. And there, we'll, 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 we'll get to, to, to some more on how it works, but very interesting stuff. One administration lasting, uh, beating your depression for some people. And then, uh, and, then as, and then as far as psilocybin, look at it versus all of the other drugs. Uh, percent of people reporting having sought emergency treatment following the use of different drugs. Heroin leads and the methamphetamine, GHB, and then you go down the list, mushrooms, mushrooms, the very last one. And here we have uh, potent harm to you, harm to the people taking the drug is in blue and harm to the others is in red. And again, mushrooms is the very last one. Alcohol is number one. <laughs> harm to others. Look at the red bar on alcohol. <laughs> it's the, the harm to others is more than twice of that of crack cocaine. Uh, anyway, and then the, the harm to others, literally there's none listed in this study anyway for mushrooms and the harm to users is lower than any others. <clears throat> the most interesting thing about the way psilocybin works therapeutically is that it does not seem to be a trick. For those that are helped, they often report working through their problems and having perspective that carries a lasting therapeutic benefit. So it's the 5-HT2A receptors. So here is their uh, mo so modulation of the cortical limbic system. So stimulate, number one, stimulation of 5-HT2A receptors results in downstream cascades via G protein signaling. Number two, altered extracellular release of dopamine leading to enhanced positive mood. Number three, down regulation of the default mode network, which is interesting, the DMN, the default mode network, I started reading about that. And desynchronization of cortical activity as well as the emergence of new patterns of functional, let me say that again, and desynchronization of cortical activity. So your old patterns are going away as well as the emergence of new patterns of functional connectivity across the brain. So for people that get stuck in, uh, in, in anger or a sadness or things they can't get over, especially for people over the age of 30, when you're young, you have uh, neurogenesis. Your brain is, your, your neurons are growing and your pathways are developing. And after you don't have, uh, after you don't have neurogenesis, after you don't have that anymore, uh, people get stuck, and even though, though they know they want to get out of their depression, they know they want to get out of their anger, it's sort of a physical process they can't get going in their brain. 
And then so the, the, the fourth one here is a sustained cellular changes leading to neuroplasticity, meaning the ability to change and window of opportunity for therapy. So very interesting. So very interestingly, psilocybin is shown to promote both neurogenesis, which is the growth of neurons, as well as significant changes in brain dynamics and functional connectivity. And then look at this graph, look at this picture here. Simplified visualization of the acute changes in brain network connectivity. So this is placebo, this is a regular person's brain. So this is brain network alterations uh, may indicate the emergency, emergence of novel patterns of connectivity following down regulation of the default mode network. What DMN, the default mode network, yep. So this is, this is from a 2014 study. The figure is adapted from the Petri 24 study of functional magnetic reson resonance imaging data from healthy volunteers compared to resting state functional brain connectivity after intravenous infusion of placebo and psilocybin. So this is healthy people taking placebo or psilocybin. And look at the connectivity in the brain. It's astounding. The connections that, that are in the, in the brain, these are, this, is, this is by MRI. This is not by self-reporting feeling whatever this is their brain is making a lot of connect, a lot of con connectivity it's it's acting young and growing and things like that and people are able to get out of their bad their bad habits bad patterns bad ruts st stuff like that this compares very well to something like ketamine which is said to give patients a glimpse of not feeling their problems and what it's like to not be depressed that does not seem as valuable as working through one's problems and then of all, so, so psilocybin, so number one, the markets couldn't be larger, a lot like cassava, and there's not, there hasn't been good treatments for a long time. Number two, psychedelics in general are having a renaissance. Number three, psilocybin looks like the best one. And then number four, it looks like Compass is the best positioned psilocybin, psilocybin psychedelic therapy company. So they've got a synthetic version of, psilo, of psilocybin called Comp360. So it's, it can be replicated consistently for potency and quality. They don't actually grow mushrooms or anything like that. They synthesize this in a lab somehow, and they've got it so that it's a, it's a repli it's, it can be, it's replicated consistently for potency and quality. This drug already has breakthrough therapy designation. We're, in my mind, there's, there, it's awful that cassava doesn't have breakthrough yet, and they will get it for somifilam for Alzheimer's. In 2018, Compass got breakthrough therapy designation for COMP360 in treatment-resistant depression. They're going to phase three later this year in treatment-resistant depression. They hit their primary endpoint in the phase two. Uh, so depression, major depressive disorder, is more than 300 million people globally. This is a UK-based company going for global markets. Uh, treatment resistant depression means you've gone through two lines of therapy and they didn't work. Now you're on your third line of therapy. That's called treatment resistant depression now. And from then on, uh, and, and those people have an 80 to 90% relapse rate. Things don't work for them. Uh, and so that, that is, so it's about a third of all major depressions or so that's more than a hundred million people. Okay. So they're going, they're going to phase three for that later this year. They're in phase two now for post-traumatic stress disorder. In phase two, about a quarter of the patients had a dramatic lasting benefit from one single administration. They, this, they, they do this once and they can see, they, they can deal with life better or something. But for, here, for the people that, are, that worked, there was, there was either 78 or 79 people in this arm of the trial. They did three arms, two very low dose for some reason, and then 25 milligrams. This is a 25 milligram, and, and of those 78 or 79 that took 25 milligrams, about a quarter, so 19 after, look at week 12. This is three months later. These are people with an 80, 90, 80 to 90% relapse rate for their depression and one administration of, of, of Compass's drug and three months later, their depression score is ridiculously lower from 16 down to about two or three. Uh, that, that's a quarter of them. And here's a, here's a quote from one of the patients in the study. I feel like I'm living again. I feel this is one of the greatest gifts I have been given. So uh, Kasav is also go, going after more IP around the 5-HT2A receptor, which seems to be the key. Here's all their programs. Again, sorry, I can't make this larger. Uh, can I? 
How do you like that? I can. I can go beyond 200%. How do you like that? Uh, so here's, so treatment resistant depression about to go into phase three, post-traumatic stress disorder, phase two. Uh, they got pro drugs, uh, which are designed to work faster, but again, 5-HT2A. Uh, they've got a discovery center for all sorts of stuff. But look at all the investigator initiated studies. Major depressive disorder uh, in cancer patients already complete uh, with a cancer center. Major depressive disorder with the University of Zurich. Chronic cluster headache, University of Copenhagen. Severe tr tr uh, treatment resistant depression, Shepherd Pratt. Also bipolar disorder too with Shepherd Pratt. Body dysmorphic disorder, anorexia, suicidal ideation, autism. And then if you look at psilocybin, there's tons of work around addiction. I'm surprised. I don't know why they're not going after it, frankly. Uh, and then Compass has five patents so far in the US, 10 overall. But look at this active patenting strategy. In March 2021, they got two patents. In October 2021, they got another patent. In November 2021, they got another patent. And they're actively going after patenting more. They got uh, their first in 2019. So five in the U.S., 10 overall. Uh, and that's ruffling some feathers because this is a – the purists are saying you can't patent these drugs. These are millennia-old drugs or whatever. But the company already won one uh, challenge to its uh, patents on merits. And on last month's call, the CEO called his confidence in the intellectual property unwavering and strong. Uh, they're headquartered in UK. All its programs are applicable globally. So they're likely to have to charge a hefty price for this once-in-a-while drug. But untreated depression is very costly, and insurers routinely cover the seemingly less promising esketamine. So we could be talking like six thousand dollars for the administration of this, but if it works, and there's and then after you know after, after there's, there's uh, effects because you know they're they're doing this hallucinogenic drug, but after that day there's not except for the good stuff it seems, and the wall of their stuff wraps up after a day all their bad stuff, so you don't have to take this drug anymore. So if it's going to work for people for months or maybe for years, the, the and they're already covering esketamine and the depression as we saw there is there is just a humongous cost to the system humongous like just literally just crushing so uh, it seems like they'll cover it and then there's also uh there's ketamine mdma ayahuasca dmt there's uh different therapies that are being done uh, under its supervision at these centers and so now just like on the discord yesterday somebody said yeah check this place out uh, and then, and we looked at, oh yeah, and look, they also do all this other stuff. So there's people getting certified, therapists getting certified to sit with the people uh, getting this therapy. They, they just sit with them, sometimes hold their hand. They, they, the people lay there with like a blindfold on and they, they, just, they, they just hold their hand if they need it and if things get tough or something. And, and then they, they're, they're certified in just, in just seeing people through the treatments. And, and the fact that this is catching on with, with ketamine, MDMA, ayahuasca, other things, there's centers now that are, are, are getting, the, the, they do it full time for, for these different treatments, which is going to help them roll out their therapy. And, it, and, it's, and it's worldwide. Uh, Compass's founder, Led, has more than $250 million in cash. So they're a little over half a billion in market cap with like half of that represented as cash. So they got plenty, plenty of cash. Again, like cassava. They're about the same cash as cassava. The stock's been destroyed by, with the rest of biotech. Average target is more than a quintuple from here. And look at those price targets. Uh, the average price target, $73. And this was, was at Wall Street Journal, it was at $12.52. But the average price target, $73. We're, we're at 14 now. So and if, if this works, which it seemed like it might, it, the upside could be, you know, the, the markets couldn't be larger. So there's Peter Thiel. Peter Thiel is probably the most successful investor in world history. He invested in Facebook, founded PayPal with Elon Musk, uh, Palantir. I, I, I'm missing dozens of the biggest companies in the world. Uh, but he's the, he's the most successful venture capitalist ever, probably. Uh, he, he backs a company, a, a Thai, A-T-A-I, and they've repeatedly invested in Compass. And uh, so he's an indirect in investor in Compass. And that's it on that. Uh, and they have there, if you want more on them, April 14th at 2.15 at the Needham Conference, they will be presenting. Okay, that was a whole mouthful, a whole lot. 
Uh, thank you, guys. I see a lot of likes. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go back to, let's go to the stocks. So Compass Meantime still up 7.5%. And Cassava, I got to pet my puppy here in a sec. Cassava's up half a percent. Got to pet the puppy. What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? He is needing some attention. All right. And with that, my tendies, friendies, let's go to the phones. Go to the phones. Uh, please like, subscribe, and join the free newsletter in the description. Please hit like. The algorithm likes like. We'll get more people in the spider web. <laughs> and you are going to like liking like. Jake, thank you very much, my friend. And <laughs> I like liking like. You guys are beating me to it. Thank you very much. I don't know if I said please like and chat and comment and subscribe and join the free newsletter, but please do. Paul, happy Monday, Joe. Happy Monday, Paul. Wondering if you know the reported short percentage today. I don't. Uh, looking to see if Weeble has it. They don't have it listed on the front. I don't have it off the top of my head, my friend. Maybe I'll get it for next time. Ashri. Good morning. Remy's under a lot of pressure. Plus, he wants 4 million shares. He will need to be very informative tomorrow. I agree. And the fact that they're doing it, it's such a strange time to, to announce a week later, okay, we're still going to do that particular conference. Very strange. So it leads me to believe he's going to have something. And I, and I completely agree with you. They, they're asking for those 4 million compensatory shares, and they asked last year and didn't get it. So I think we'll see a full-throated, vociferous sales pitch on why uh, they should be approved. Mr. Hemmings, stock analyst with $8 price target has a minus 10% average return stat. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yep. Johnny English, with this new analyst price update, get the sense something big is coming. Yeah, I completely agree. They're shaking the tree. They're trying to get people to sell before the good news comes. Who can they shake out of the trees? Hold on tight. Jeffrey, I wonder who is paying the Univest analyst. Yeah. Jay, pre-market conference, directors exercising early, open label day to do, all bullish signs for tomorrow. Absolutely. Wakas Iman. Hey, Joe, good to see you, my friend. Good to see you, my friend. Really looking forward to the fireside chat tomorrow, hoping for some real kick butt news to send the shorts to heck where they belong. I'm with you, my friend. I'm with you. Leon, guess how many times Sava trading will be suspended if there are big news tomorrow? Ooh, yeah, they'll probably suspend it, you know, for... Suspend it until there's bad news, probably. <laughs> Ryan, James a fool. He's credible, though. Yeah, he's a fool. Yep. <laughs> James Jang is less relevant than Plus One. Seriously, there's a, what, what a cast of characters we have here. <laughs> I'm buying happiness today. <laughs> I don't know about that one, my friend. I don't know about that one. James Jang, a 31% success rate. He probably was shorting Twitter this morning. Oh, yeah, I saw uh, uh, Elon Musk took a big position. They call Twitter like a utility. Twitter is something, you know, I don't know if it's a good, if it's a public good or not, but it's something the whole world uses, and everybody's gotten utility out of it. Everybody's gotten value out of it, except for shareholders. It's been an awful stock. It's been, it couldn't have caught on anymore, and it never made any money. Daily Mix, he is an expert, same as Clown Bick, yeah. Joyce Gallagher, James Jang linked as James J and no picture either, very odd, yeah. He's a flyby, he seems like a hit and run artist. He can't, he doesn't, he doesn't show his name, it doesn't show, doesn't even show his full name, let alone his picture, doesn't show either of those things, and then he doesn't stay anywhere for very long, yeah. <laughs> Dana! unhappily sighing over some fellow Chinese business people. Well, if there's a billion of them, there's going to be some bad ones, right? Though I believe there are more with solid values. Yeah, exactly. As we know, there are more with solid values and ethics who are not only pursuing money like yourself. Like yourself, Dana. Jake, fellow longs, maybe a great week to trade Sava. I usually don't trade, but a Tuesday sell and Wednesday buyback might be an easy way to pick some shares up. Could be. Who knows? I myself will be hodling because <laughs> it's just too hard. It's too hard to know. Jake Thompson, because of the Fed stuff, of course. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. 
Investing is Saba equals excitement plus uncertainty. It is a casino. It's, it is exciting. Joyce on Univest website. Univest was the sole book runner on happiness in 2019. There you go. There, there you go. You know what? With all of the changes coming to Chinese listings, maybe they got to find a new line of work. Maybe going after stocks like Casaba is their new line of work. Joyce, Univest, yep, yep, yep. Sava competition. Oh, Immune Bio, right. Immune Bio, they brought them IPO 2019. Right, right, right. The dog's right behind me. Budster, what is going on? He wants attention. He's at, sometimes he gets in this mood where if I turn and look at him and I go to pet him, his tail just starts wagging like crazy. And he's, he just really wants attention, and that's him right now. And is him right now. Show us the puppy. He's he's down there. When I I'll, I'll get the new set going here. I'll, 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 the, the camera's going to be farther back. I'm going to open the room up, and then I'll have him on camera. I don't want to. The camera's on a tripod. I don't want to get change it up. Thanks for your hard work. Thank you, Oscar. My pleasure, my friend. I'm not sure about Compass. Street value for psilocybin is a lot less than six grand. Agreed. However, for the people that actually want a therapy, uh, there's people that are not ever ever ever, and a lot of them, going to be comfortable buying uh, drugs off the street. Uh, this is the, if it's the only one that measured, is the only one uh, approved by the FDA, the key there for me is that if it's covered by insurance. So the, there's not going to be people that, you don't know what you're getting if something has grown, even, even if you know, it seems trustworthy. This is synthesized in a lab approved by the FDA and they're inspected by the, faci inspected the facilities by the FDA. The key for me is if insurance covers it, there's plenty, 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 plenty of people that would never buy stuff like off the street or whatever that would consider a therapy that their doctor recommends that would do it, I think. So it, it, it's an, it, that's, that's an interesting, interesting point, but they're, they seem very well positioned in my opinion. And then if things do get uh, recreational like cannabis or whatever, they also seem well positioned and they're aware of these things. They don't know how it's going to play out, but they're there anyway. Who knows? Andy, Joe, you look great. Thank you, my friend. I was wondering what's the news tomorrow for Saba. The news tomorrow for Saba, I, I, I think we'll get uh, enrollment updates and then perhaps some ad hoc numbers. We're due for updates on uh, the open label or bio markers from the open label. Uh, and then see it, maybe even a CMS update, if not enrollment numbers, uh, and then phase three numbers. Uh, I think a full throated defense from all the FUD as well as arguing for the compensatory shares. So, but I, I do think, I, I think that we'll get something new tomorrow. I think we'll have some because, because of the timing, throwing it on late and doing it early in the morning, it just screams to me that they've got something. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Paul, I was given ketamine when I shattered my leg with a compound fracture. They made me think of a happy image before they put me under the drug. I needed it. Interesting. I've never had the experience. Thank you, Joe. My pleasure, Anto. Thank you. John, Paul, remember your green... I did. I thought about it. Remember, I thought about it. Remember your green shirt for tomorrow. I will, my friend. Remember, 845 tomorrow, guys. 845. Hi, Joe. I'm deeply impressed by the great supporters the Bears have. First, a newspaper ranked 4,434th, and now an analyst ranked 7,930th. The desperation must be huge. I'll say so, yeah. I mean, really. Uh-oh, Sean. Now, Sean, we like to put the pressure on Sean because he's usually very insightful. So what do you got for us, Sean? Sean, I asked, I asked Eric Schoen, the CFO, in an email if we were going to hear from the company before the investor conference. And the next day, he responded to me right after the news of the chat. Seemed excited to say it. So there's more. So good. All right. So first of all, we approve. Thank you for that. That's insightful stuff. That was a, you know, you did your own little research and shared it with us. Thank you so very much. Uh, yeah. So there's more pointing toward. It seems like I think we're going to get a, a piece of news tomorrow. We'll see. I'm sorry if I'm, a, if I'm aiding and getting people's hopes up for no reason. Sorry about that. But it's pointing toward it. We'll see. I'm hoping. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to pay attention to my puppy and make a big fuss over him. It was great seeing you guys. Andy, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Andy. I really appreciate it. Uh, great seeing you guys. Uh, join the newsletter. 
And uh, eight, remember, 8.45 tomorrow morning. Have a wonderful night, 8.45 tomorrow morning, and that'll be a lot of fun. Hopefully, we'll get some good news. Great to see you. Have a great night. See you tomorrow morning.